Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Welcome to Wow What a Week. The load shedding may have decreased, but now the fuel prices have increased. It's like God is having like a sick uh, sense of humor with yeah. the. You know, he, I'm sure he keeps saying to uh, to Gabriel, hey, hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> now, some of you may be watching us while your block has power, but in case you're running a generator in the background, let's get going. Welcome back to Wow What a Week. This is. Wow! What, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. Our comedian for this week is returning because, one, I like him. Two, it's my birthday month and I'll do what the hell I want. And three, it's my show. I'll do what the hell I want. <laughs> to a number of people pronouncing his name, it sounds like it should have a click in it, but it doesn't. This is seen as good news to many who have a nervous breakdown trying to pronounce Bantu names. <laughs> Even if you did mispronounce his name, though, he'd actually help you because he can. Please give a wow welcome to Eugene Koza. Eugene? Please, guys, sit and please, please sit. <laughs> <laughs> Happy but, birthday month, Tato. My dude, it's my birthday month, so I figured for my yes. birthday month, I want to hang out with comedians that I've loved for as long as I've known them. Oh, man, we love you so much. But, but also because we've been doing this for about six, seven months, and you were our first ever guest. Yes, so figured, the first ever episode. Absolutely. So yeah, we meet again. Look we, at you having the most amount of fun. Hey, dude, you have no idea. You guys mean I'm worried about the fun that you're having. With this much fun, yeah. are you ever going to go back to radio? At the rate things are going and with the plans for next year, mm. unlikely, but we'll see. Every man has a prize. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Remember I don't Timo know. Touch, Timo Touch was like, eh, Touch Central, eh, eh, Fire FM, Metro, like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Every man has a prize, so we'll see. Yo, I think Timo Touch's next venture is going to be opening a church. I think it's five minutes from opening a church. And I'd go to that church. No, no, but also because he comes from a pedigree of pastors. Ah. It's in his blood. Uh-huh. So it's not like he's sh- taking chances. Yeah. It's in his blood. Who would go to that church? You, you, you know what I mean? So, Bomuli uh, have been... Um, in the church business. It's been the church. So, so, so for me, Tibo Touch ministering in church mm. and outside of radio wouldn't be a, a surprise at all. Would we go? You and I? it'll be easy money, touch, <laughs> tax free. Use it, don't use it. <laughs> I love you, touch. So, uh, yes, but don't be those pastors that want to touch, touch. <laughs> You've also heard about those. <laughs> and that's in your anus. Jesus eh? love you. <laughs> and the finger's going in your bum. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. so as you can tell, we were probably uh, those kids that were disruptive in class. 100%. Um, our report cards probably read the same, uh, has potential, mm-hmm. but is very disruptive. Mm-hmm. Doesn't fully apply himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes noise in class. Mm-hmm. That was both of us, right? Yeah, that was 100% me. So this week was uh, World uh, Teacher Day. Mm. Um, in fact, it was Thursday. Mm. So I wanted to find out from you, um, just some of your teacher influences, whether positive or negative. Sure, I had, I had the best teachers in primary school. I think yeah. they shaped my uh, outlook on life. Uh, the first one was obviously my aunt. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Koza. Sure. She was a teacher at my school. She taught me science. And then Jeez. That... So were you like a teacher's pet? Yeah, absolutely. She was my aunt. I mean, come Jeez, on. no shame. Nothing. <laughs> it was NC. This is how NC. This is like I've meant like it. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one was Mrs. Ramalepe. Sure. Who was a dedicated teacher. She actually eventually became principal of the school. Yeah. And she taught us English. Okay. What people don't understand is I never went to an English school. I went to a government school through and through. Kretchen sure. government. Yeah. No, I can tell the way Culture, it's culture, culture. Yeah. Eh? yeah. Throughout. Sure. And what people don't understand is, or take for granted, is the mm-hmm. fact that if you go to a township school throughout your whole schooling life, sure. is English is 25 minutes a day yeah. for three to four days at maximum. Sure. You don't have English period every day. And, and, and for many kids, the English lesson is not always taught in English. Yes. The English lesson itself. Yes. 
is not taught in English. Yeah. So Ms. Ramalepe was very dedicated. She tried so hard to make us understand the language and love it yeah. and interact with it. And for that, I'll forever be grateful. I think she gave me uh, the confidence to go out there in the world and represent mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Geez, uh, for me, I, I think I started grade two. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Bodenstein. Um, was she German? Mrs. Bodenstein. She probably was. Yeah. But she spoke very good English, so I don't think she's German. <laughs> well, she wasn't those Germans. But but uh, <laughs> one thing I appreciated about her, yeah. and in fact, I learned about parenting from her. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. So I was a problem child. And what? I, no, no, okay. I am a problem child. <laughs> But when my career was starting, <laughs> <laughs> getting me ready for school every yeah. morning was like herding cats. Jeez. And I was the only child at the time. Jeez. I'm one man. Yes. But these two parents don't know what the hell has hit them. So every morning was a problem getting yeah. me ready for school. Yeah. And I remember that one morning my dad wanted to comb my hair, but my hair was very, very... <laughs> like steel wool. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want him to touch my hair. And I can't remember what he said to me, you don't comb your hair, what? I can't remember what he said. And I said to him in Setswana, him or Popeye. What do you know? You're the Popeye. Are you still alive to tell the tale? <laughs> <laughs> or is this your clone? What happened? <laughs> See, the <laughs> dad <of> Popeye. <laughs> as I'm running from him, because now he wants to Also, you had that nerve to run as well. So as I'm running, no, I knew a smack is coming. My mom catches me just as I'm running out, drags me and gives me a spanking. So I go to school crying. Oh, it was clear I had been crying. Yes. So so I lived about five houses from my school. So I walked to school. Yes, yes. So from grade one, I literally walked myself to school. Uh -huh. And I get to class, Mrs. Bordenstein sees that I've been crying. And she literally grabbed my hand and she told the class she'll be back, walked me home and tuned my parents in front of me that uh, you can do what the hell you want with kids, but never before school. Because this person is going to spend the whole day at school. And if this is how they come in, mm. chances are that's how they're going to be the whole day. So the ability to learn mm. already is compromised because of how they arrive at school. So from that day, that a huge parenting lesson, dude. So 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 even with my kids, yeah. As much as my kids, uh, you can tell them my kids because they're also sometimes problematic in the morning. <laughs> I make it's sure paternity that test. Rather, we that's my paternity test. <laughs> what swap? Yeah. If Papa, why are you putting any hair pad in my mouth? I don't need to do that. <laughs> like, shh, 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 just open your mouth, man. <laughs> <laughs> As I promised myself, I was not going to laugh loud when I got here. But look at me now. <laughs> anyway, so 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 that's what I learned. I learned mm. parenting from Mrs. Bodenstein. So even with my kids, if no matter how angry I may be, mm. we'll deal with it after school. That's they amazing. They must get to school ready to learn and not worried about you know, the shit that happened at home. Jeez, that's good advice. So so, so I learned that from uh, Mrs. Bodenstein in grade two. Jeez, that's um, good so, so wherever she is right now, uh, if you're watching, thank you, uh, ma'am. And and you did a great job. And my second teacher was probably my drama teacher, uh, Warren Neby. He was my drama teacher from grade ten to matric. And when first of all, I'm surprised you did drama, dude. I was in every production, every single term, all of high school, because for me that was my outlet. Because I was a very shy, awkward child. Yeah. And 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 an only child. No, so no, not no, to play no, with no, no, I stopped being an only child. At, but eventually it ended? Eventually, my little sister arrived when I was eight. <laughs> now I have to share shit. <laughs> and then when I was 13, my little brother arrived. But anyway, so Mr. Nibi was our drama teacher. Mm -hmm. And I remember how the, he pushed us to find who we really are on stage and to remember how great we are. And that through that greatness, we can be storytellers. Mm -hmm. So because initially I used to take a drama for granted. It was just another reason why you don't have to go to prep because we've got rehearsal. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So so when Mr. Nevi became our drama teacher, I was very suicidal. I was very depressed. And because of that man... He saved your life. I, I literally started just putting whatever work I could into the drama I was doing. And it reached a point where in my matric year, I was doing three productions literally parallel. And that man taught me that I can be that great, that I can do three productions parallel. All the years I've known you, I never knew this about and, you. And, and, and the one production was, I was the only student. Uh, everyone else was uh, act, like proper actors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was the only student. 
and had to play like a, 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 an army general in this in this production. So, so to Mr. Nibi, my dude, you have no idea how you saved my life. I love you, my guy, and I know you're still doing a lot of work with mm. drama. You kick ass, and uh, yeah, thanks for saving my life. But this explains why you love comedy so much, right? Why? Because you like performances. You like seeing a good performance. Because I've never seen you at a bad comedy show. Um, I've never heard someone say, you know, Tato was there, and the show was horrible. Yeah, but there's other things to discuss. <laughs> Often if it's a bad comedy show, you don't even discuss who was there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sad story yeah. um, out of Soweto. Um, I think uh, kids who died in Naledi. Yes. And and the suspicion is they ate biscuits that were either contaminated or expired. Mm. And obviously there's also the story of the two teenagers who've been arrested for selling space cookies to primary school kids. Yes, in Pretoria. In Pretoria. And I, and I think the charge is murder because we're told they forced these kids to eat the space cookies. And some of these kids died. And there's another one today in the West Rand. Yeah. Two kids mm. died after buying food yeah. at a taxi rank. And, 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 and it, it brings me to what I actually feel has been one of my biggest fears in J. Mm. We trust people who handle food so much, eh? Yeah, but it's, also it, yeah. we also take for granted what happens in the townships. Yeah. So I think with the migration of a lot of middle class black people, we've sort of mm. lost touch with what happens. Sure. Drug addiction in the township is not coincidental. Mm. Kids get hooked into drugs. Okay. Through things that they enjoy. Sure. Sweets, snacks, mm. activities that they are partaking in and someone uh, gives them something for free. So these deaths are not new. They've been happening for a long time in the township. It's just that we didn't have a name for it. Sure. But now when you watch shows like Sizoktola, mm. when you look at where the money goes or where the drugs come from, it's always these puzzle shops in the townships. Mm. But you think, how do you create customers by getting them hooked and mm. you start them very young? Oh, so you think that's why they the were forced to eat this? It's 100% cookies. what happens. Mm. It's 100% what happens. It's been sense. happening. For, I grew up in a township and I went to township all my life, mm. school mm. all my life. This is what happens. Mm. You get hooked as a child, and then that's what happens. You don't become an addict overnight, because if you think about it, where does a 16-year-old, for example, in the township, mm. where the family barely has enough money to feed the family, get time to indulge in drugs? Absolutely. So someone gets you hooked, and then from then on, it's a downward spiral. And then from there is Mama's TV, Mama's toaster, Mama's room divider. Everything goes. So I think it's a deeper problem to look into. It's not about the spaza shops. Mm. It's about mm. the drugs that are filtering into the township and getting younger kids addictive. Mm. But it's also wild still, though, yep. that, you know, you go to Umama under a tree selling food and you buy. And you kind of just hope that... Yeah, she everything is okay. Right. Yo, and you know? I'm, I'm a big fan of mascopas, yeah, uh, and I've went home so many this, times with yellow lips. Uh, for instance, I've never bought a mascopas because of that. You've never bought them? Because I'm like, I don't know where they were made. I don't know how... Like, it's, it's For me, it's difficult. Even just buying amaguinha, fat cakes, yeah. from the lady in the corner there. <laughs> I do it because I love Ama Green. You know? Yes. But, but then you worry about where the door was. Uh, but I also worry that <laughs> I went back. What if, and you hear stories of how uh, as they're rolling the door, they're also <laughs> probably on the inner thigh there. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I remember there was a lady who used to sell Ama Green outside the SABC. Yes. Uh, when I was at Metro. Mm -hmm. Every morning we'd go and buy like 20 of these. Jeez. I was like, guys, I think there's something in these things. I'm sure to roll out there. I would be fine. They will know me. <laughs> you know, I think people who can tell us about that is probably Reedy and Chris Muruling. Why? Uh, because they like telling our tales to people. So, so what, what did happen with uh, Reedy, Chabi, and Chris Muruling? I love Reedy so much, uh, yeah. but Chris and I don't know him, so I don't love him. I actually prefer Chris over Reedy. Reedy is not a teacher. Oh, Reedy is a teacher. No, he's a teacher's pet. He's a teacher. He's a teacher. He's a teacher. So, so, so what happened? So they were in the U.S. doing what? So they were invited by Republican Congress okay. to come and speak on why the U.S. government should continue with AGOA. So what's so special about them that the other ones? Hey, among us, yes. Okay. But they were there. But Chris Muruleng is the most interesting one for me because I didn't know he was not actually South African. Okay. Yeah, he's actually Zimbabwean. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, and he's the same guy, if you don't know. Don't said, touch don't me. Don't touch me. Yeah. Did you know this? No, no, I've known that, yeah. I was so he, shocked. He was my boss at the SABC. I was like, the guy who used to say, don't touch me, no, I stood, and I was touching the whole country uh, in yeah. Congress. In the US, yeah. And telling our and Dabas. So that one, you're not. I, so, so what did they say about us? 
hey, they said, yeah, we don't know what we're doing here. There's too much corruption. You know, I saw, I saw, I saw some of the clips. You, yeah. know, what, you know what it felt like? Mm. It felt like some of the white folk that are now in Perth and left in 1994. You know? After buying a whole pantry load of tin food. Hey? Which they left because they were abandoning because the blacks are taking over. Do you know? So it, it almost felt like that. It, it almost felt like, yeah, that's what it felt like. But then I say, and, and, and yes, we're not, we're, you know, we're not a picture of perfection mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Like we're far from it. Mm -hmm. But this session they had in Congress, I don't know. But I mean, I, the conversation that I have with my friends all the time is yeah. between Russia and the U.S., who would we choose as our friends? Yeah. Because Representative Jackson made a good point and yeah. he said, why is the U.S. trying to force South Africa to become their friend when Russia was actually South Africa's best friend during apartheid. Uh, exactly. Like black South Africa's best friend. I mean, uh, Reagan's administration, uh, you know, were quartered to suck in the Nats' cocks. Yeah. I mean, that's why they never, you know, called the Nats out. Yeah. At a time that they should have called the Nats out. Yeah. But I think our dependency, dependency into America, for me, worries me a lot, Tato, because I think they themselves are a failing state. What happens in America right now is very scary. Mm. Joe Biden can't string two sentences together. He can't stay awake. He doesn't remember half the time where he is. He can't get on and off of stage. And he's honestly caught to a diaper. You think so? I, he's caught to if a diaper. If he's not already. Well, trust me. We don't want to like I'll fail. But you know, I'll rotate in America fail. So I don't know. I think I think Reddy Reddy maybe owes us an apology a little bit. Maybe she must come and explain to us why she went and told our Andabas to our neighbors because but, but, but she wouldn't, even if she genuinely did. She doesn't give a fuck. Do you think so? No, she wouldn't. So don't don't hold your breath. Really? I'm holding my breath after the show, Nick. Please explain to us why you went there and in the simplest of English terms, stay good. Why are you telling our Andabas? To our neighbors. But they're not even neighbors. They're across the they pond. Are. And most of us can't even swim. So, so yeah. A moment of silence for that one. Speaking of uh, <laughs> contaminated food, yes. I don't know if you saw the videos of Davido that were trending, uh, but I think it was like the past week. Mm. So Davido's sitting at a dinner table. Mm -hmm. uh, people are eating. And someone brings him a dished out plate of food. Already? It's already dished out. Mm -hmm. And Davido takes the plate of food and he puts it down. And he takes an empty plate and then he dishes for himself from the food that's on display there. And then there's another video where someone comes and gives him a bottle of water. But I think the top is undone mm -hmm. already. And Davido literally puts it away. And then goes and... And, 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 <coughs> and you know, people are asking, like, what's going on? And, and for me, it makes sense. In the world we live in, and, and that's how I was raised, that never, ever accept a pre-dished out plate of food. Why? Because I think maybe there's a simple explanation why Davido turned back the food because and turned back the water. I think for me, uh, one of the reasons might be because an uncle of mine when I was in primary school was poisoned at a drinking spot. Mm. Uh, they were drinking traditional brew mm -hmm. and uh, he was given one that was poisoned. Mm -hmm. And he literally walking home started getting sick. Mm -hmm. By the time he got home, he, he died from uh, from a poisoning mm -hmm. and generally on the continent we are raised as africans don't in, in in fact you're often told never take a plate of food that is not dished out by your mother or your wife generally because you don't know what's been put in there but there you were at the sabc eating maquinas from that woman hence i said that <laughs> we, we we somehow trust people no no the thing is though if, if that lady is targeting all of us then we're all going <laughs> but if eugene comes with you a plate brief, of food yes. But if Eugene is coming with like, here's a plate of food. But what if we were reading too much into it? What if what if there was no, uh, the, the meal that was dished up was not his favorite? No, no, he knows better. And the water was sparkling nah, instead when, of still. Oh, no, dude, when, you, when you're operating at the levels that uh, Davido is operating at, you don't know who's for you, you don't know who's against you. Why would you take, um, why would you accept a bottle of gin that's opened already? So you don't roll like that, Tato? No, next for call. But we too late ourselves. Dude, I'll dish out for myself or I won't eat even. There are even places where I will not eat. Because like I said, I mean, we live in an evil world. You don't know what the fuck has been put in the food. Jesus. So, so I don't blame people who say I'll dish out for myself. So what's your take on Dalimbofu's losing streak? What Since losing streak? Was there a winning streak <laughs> ever? Because often, I mean, ever ever I mean, often we compare things... <laughs> Eh? Yin, yen, win, lose. So I think he's been Kaiser Chiefs in, like, so I don't understand. Like, was there ever a winning streak? Was there a cup anyway? I don't know why you're laughing. 
don't know what was to say it. And you said it. <laughs> you said it. You said, because I sit there and think, so if you choose Dalimbofu to become your representative in court, mm-hmm. are you going there hoping to lose or are you there going, if, if I win, it's a bonus? Well, that is a great question. Because no one he's represented has ever won. Jacob Zuma has lost numerous times. Mm. And the latest one is Busu M. Kwebane, who's just lost now, becoming the public protector. But there's always a winner, though. Who's the winner? The bank account. Do you think there's that, something that, that, that we that don't, don't see here that's going on regarding this litigation? I think often he wants to represent people who are coming in looking like underdogs. That's what it looks like from where I'm sitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in actual fact? He's looking for underdogs and maybe an easy payday. I have no idea. I can't speak on his behalf and I don't... Should I call him? Do you have his number? I have his number. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's going back to court again now with Jacob Zuma. Oh, challenging the... The nomination the appointment of... Appointment uh, of, of Raymond Justin Zondo. Ray- Raymond Zondo. Yes, but yeah. I feel like Jacob Zuma is one of those people you don't want to make enemies with because you're not going pay for him, it will never finish. Even at your funeral, he will come and open your casket and go... <laughs> and serve you a summons. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you now. And a part of me loves people like that. Who are vexatious litigants. I love people who or, or sometimes just seem like that Petit Labelle. That me, uh, if there's a button to push, I'll push it. Uh, I, I think life needs people like that just for shits and giggles. I think the good Lord sprinkles life <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's like you, you'll struggle. I was like, what? <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> you spoke about it at the beginning, the petrol price has gone up again. Yeah. But every time I see the Reserve Bank governor, Lesija Kanyako, <laughs> telling me about five, five basis points, I can't, why are you speaking like that? I don't know, but then, <laughs> every time I say five basis points, my voice, my, my, my voice changes. Doesn't maybe Lissija Kanyako maybe maybe consider? Mm. Ne? Just I'm just just a suggestion. What a, if, B- a BBL for the voice. <laughs> if he wants us to hear what he's saying, yeah. what is the higher spokesperson? Because this auto tune for us is not working. I mean, I don't hear what this guy is saying. After five, five. Already, already, this point. already is a tea pain in the butt of our wallets, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a Mercedes Benz with five basis points, GP, that's the guy. Hoot. Five, five basis. <clears throat> Sorry, you're so stupid. <laughs> so, so we have an avian flu problem. Yeah. Uh, basically, our birds, uh, no, as in chickens, not the cherry. I was scared. No, our birds have flu. And uh, millions of chickens have been culled. Mm. That's why we are culling. Mm. Uh, cull. Get it? <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> that was strictly for KZN. And, uh, the... and the culling is not seizing right now. Because <laughs> we still have avian flu. Yes. Anyway, mm-hmm. so apparently there's shops now that are rationing eggs. Mm. You only allow X amount. So you can only buy, for instance, half a dozen or a dozen. You can't come in and buy, you know, what, like we did with toilet paper mm. at the beginning of lockdown. You know, the people are still shitting from the toilet paper from me. <laughs> from lockdown the, paper. That's how much toilet paper they, they, they bought. No, no, so they're starting to ration eggs. I think this is just a hype to, uh, to, to, um, thing to revive the, the poultry market and the poultry but business. How, but how when you've culled millions of chickens already? Yeah, but what we take for granted is all these businesses are insured. Oh. You see? So you think someone coughed in a chicken? It's like... <laughs> Go infect the others. Also, I mean, I still go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still go back to. We must still think how many labs can test for avian flu mm. in the world globally. Okay. How many of them in South Africa or how many of them in the continent? Mm. There's always going to be a monopoly to try and sway the market. The okay. poultry business just mm. exists on two fronts alone. Mm. On three fronts, feed. Mm. Food, which is the meat itself, and mm. eggs. Sure. So these three things here, they need revival. And what is the best way to revive them and create create a, I think a pandemic? Because there's pandemic for chickens. Because so, remember there was mad cow disease. Yeah. And what did that do for the beef industry? It helped them because all of a sudden insurance paid, 
B farmers could expand. But it's also, but also Norox sales went went up also. Yes. So it was good for Norox even. So that, I mean, I don't buy anything, especially after COVID. I don't buy that any tragedy is not manufactured. So, 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 so you're a conspiracy theorist, basically. Yes, because I've gone to so many shops since the avian flu story yeah. and the shortage of eggs. Yeah. And I've seen eggs all over the place. And in my head, I was like, okay, so must I buy them in case they finish? But if I buy them, I'm causing the shortage because now... But you're a causer, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if so, anyone is allowed to cause anything, it's... So, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not buying this this thing. I'm, I'm not buying this avian flu. I, I think it's just money that's to be made to revive dude, the poultry business. Dude, but it's school holidays also. So I think there's a dad out there who's actually happy that eggs have been rationed. Because yeah. school holidays, the kids yeah. will finish the eggs and they'll finish the oros. Yeah. And then auntie also. Why is auntie having six eggs? It reminds her of home. No, no, Mavis, no. Six eggs for what? You just need two eggs and bread. And until also eat eight slices of bread and six eggs. Like, you know, I need to clean your house. No, no, auntie, no. So okay, how many eggs must people have at your house, Tato? Just two eggs. You just need two eggs. Two. All you need is two eggs. The yolk is fatty. You don't need all that fat in your system. Just have two eggs, auntie. Please, this is not a... Eh? You sound like my mom during school holidays. My mom would be like, you're only allowed to open the fridge twice a day. Yo. Yeah, she's like, nothing changed between the time that you open in the morning and the yeah. time that you're going to open that night. If you open it third time, she'll go, Oi, vulu, Ivali. Oi, vulu, Ivali. Ifrit, yam, le. Oi, vulu, Ivali. Then like, it's just a fridge with this thing. It is. <laughs> no, it's not just a fridge. No, no. That's why a lot of parents hate school holidays. Because these little people, they eat, people, they eat, man. They're like little eating machines. You know, I don't know if you watch Gremlins. Gremlins, yes. uh, yeah. They're like little Gremlins. They're <laughs> eating everything. No. So maybe it's good we have an egg ration thing. We'll fix the eggs after school holidays are finished. Yeah, don't buy this egg rationing thing. You'll tell me. We'll come back here six months later and you'll tell me, Eugene, this thing was manufactured. Yeah. Mm, don't Let, buy it. Let's wrap up with Mama Joy. Mama Joy is um, South Africa's number one sports fan. Mm. Uh, she's at the Rugby World Cup and a lot of people are complaining that why is the Department of um, Sports, Arts and Culture sponsoring Mama Joy to go be a fan out there in the world? And I'm saying, why not? I mean, if she's proven herself to be the number one sports fan... And is she? Can you prove that she's not? Yeah, but which audition did she go to? Who did she beat? Which test did she write? But would you have gone? Nah. Yeah. If they're paying me. No, no, but would you have gone? If, for instance, we see the same face at the games supporting. Yeah. We see the same face, whether it's cricket, soccer, or anywhere else, supporting and showing love and being out there in the name of the game. Mm. And I decide that I need someone who's going to be our human mascot. Zakumi. I'm going to go for that person. Why should I hold auditions when there's already a person who's been living it already? Does Mama Joy have kids? I don't know. So I think her kids are going to be anonymously testifying on carte blanche one day. For my mom, they're going to call some biscuit or you go to my We raised ourselves with Vuvuzel. Mama Joy should be at home with her children. You know, when things were tough, we'd have to fry Vuvuzel. Even the eggs. When she was at the Rugby World Cup, there was an egg rushing. So sometimes we'd fly, fry up Vuvuzela. <laughs> and then the price of petrol also went up. But Mama was eating Joy there. In France. Well, nope. <laughs> eating croissants. And then it like it did not help our uh, our uh, the the trauma because during the rugby world cup then the cricket world cup started. Oh, so that's now my choice is not gonna be. So now we are wondering if now she's going to go to the cricket alls. Where's where's the cricket world cup? We are hungry. Which country is the cricket world cup? Where's it starts today, world cup? Yeah. India. It's in India. So she's not coming back home. She's just going we, straight we, from we, France. We we don't know. Hmm? Yeah. I know, Mama Joy, do your thing, my man. So I'm fine with it. Mama Joy, enjoy these games. And, 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 and you know, sadly, people will, will, will talk shit about people who were doing shit already. Yeah. That are, and that now someone decided, I'm going to pay you to do it. You've been doing it. So basically, we should have sent Mama Joy to Congress. Mama Joy should have gone to Congress. Mm -hmm. Every time Ridi opens her mouth, she goes, <laughs> to the that's what we should have thought. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Chris opens his mouth, she takes a bubuzel and touches his stool. <laughs> 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 
That's where we should have sent Mama Joy. Ah, oh, that. Eugene, what are you working on for the rest of the year, my dude? Oh, the rest of the year is I'm launching my podcast. Uh, yes, that's coming. A, a second one, actually, because I've got the first one. That's already. Cheers, boy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing it. Use the other return, Baba. So I'm doing a second one oh, right grandchild, now, grandchild, which comes grandchild. out. <laughs> 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 yeah, from from Yizo Yizo to Shaga Ibele, that was a good transition. Uh, who's Ibele were you looking at? Yeah, Tato, like I was saying, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually started uh, Shaga Ibele um, a couple of days ago. And what do you think? I am enjoying, I think, well, I've only watched three episodes, mm. so Shaga hasn't been born yet. Oh, I, I, I'm oh, enjoying So it. you're watching the best Shaga Ibele? Oh, wow. Yeah, it gets worse from here. Are you for real? Yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it. The first guy. three episodes, before Shaga was born. Yeah. So Shaga's birth is just like any birth of any child in any relationship. Yeah. It ruined it for everyone. Because now we can't do it. Dude, dude, dude. my great, 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 great grandfather is from the Rustenburg area. Yeah. Uh, the Bahurutsi. Yes. We're now near the Zim border because of Shaga. So it ruined it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we fucking ran. <laughs> My man, KZN, we were in the Rustenburg area. So that's just... <laughs> we were in the Rustenburg area during Shaga's era. My man, we ran to near the Zimbabwe. Yeah, so you're watching the best episodes of Shaga, and you know the, the, the Zulu family of yeah. uh, Queen Nandi yeah. are litigating against uh, the production company because they say the show itself was not historically factual. Was it supposed to be? Yeah, apparently it was supposed. If you're gonna call it Shaga Ilembe, it mm. better be historically factual. So they are litigating now, and I'm like, yeah, I see why they were outraged because when uh, Nandi was dating Suffocate, I was like, I know you lost me here. You lost me at Suffo, Suffo. So Shaga's stepdad was Suffocate. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> So you're watching, you, you're watching when, when, the best. You, I'm sure all the only thing missing was David Gennaro to come on, on the set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're dumb. Oh, man. So that's what I'm working on. <laughs> you're so dumb. You know I was supposed to make you laugh. Now you're making me laugh. On the this litigation, I'm told, is the reason why season second season might be put on hold. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope second season gets put on hold. I, I just hope so. I, I, I think this was should, enough. No, I, I haven't had enough. Because, it, it, dude, there's... Tato, you are not even on episode four. Okay. You still have eight episodes to go, my all, man. All I know is I'm enjoying the first three episodes and I'll get to episode four. As soon as I leave the podcast, I'm going straight there to watch it. Until you see Nomzamo kissing Safo Kate. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then now you'll be litigating. Too <laughs> 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 Okay, so your new podcast, where do we watch it when? Uh, it's going to be on YouTube. I strictly want to take it strictly on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about the news. The news explain the way you want, it to, sure. you want to hear it. Okay. Because I feel like news is so stodgy and mm -hmm. it comes up mm -hmm. uh, almost preachy. And I feel sure. like election season is coming next year and we know nothing about who we're going to vote for. Most people don't even know who the candidates are. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up with a president that we didn't vote for because we didn't vote at all. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And chances are there'll be a coalition government anyway. At the right things. Absolutely. Ago. And voter apathy is a big part. And you sure. know, all the candidates are gunning for young voters because they are the majority. Mm. But what's funny is, and this is a conspiracy. And they're the most sick and tired also. And I'm the, I'm the most conspiracy theorist person that you'll ever meet. Sure. I feel like there's a need and there's a huge effort to keep the young people's influencers busy. Mm. So why is it that all the rap superstars and all the Kwaito and I mean all the Mapiano and all the DJ mm. uh, DJs are busy and they've got campaigns where they can't speak and preach about what their political opinions are during a season where they should be doing so or affiliated with any party? Also, are you saying they're forced to think with their stomachs? Absolutely, so but that, they, they kept busy. So that they can't vocalize what they truly feel. And I can bet you money that during election or voting season, there's going to be more events than you've ever seen in your life. True. Because the youth will have to choose. Do I have to go queue to vote for someone I don't know? Mm. Or do I have to go to a party and see someone that I know? Mm. So that's where we are right now. I feel like the, the young people that have influence over the youth have all been given deals that would last them until election season next year. So we won't be seeing any voices of people that are influential talking about politics and talking about voter apathy sure. and teaching young people how to vote. And that's my obsession. And that's the main reason mm. why I want to do this show on, uh, on YouTube. And I think sure. uh, I'm going to have interesting guests and I want to have my opinions and I want to vexate my uh, conspiracy theories and see where it goes. Absolutely. And I hope to be proven wrong. My dude, love your work. 
Love your work. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, you'll be back again because, like I said, you was a great way to start the morning. Like I said, you made me laugh, and that's very hard to do. Eh? It's my birthday month, like I said, and uh, we'll be doing quite a few giveaways. What we're giving away on this episode is a pair of David Gao Feltskun golf shoes. <laughs> if you'd like to win yourself a limited edition Feltskun David Gao golf shoe, all you need to do is subscribe and or like on the YouTube page or comment with hashtag David Gao golf shoe. Then we'll know that you're in for the David Gao golf shoe. Uh-huh. So do that and uh, we could be announcing your name next week and uh, sending you a brand new pair of... David Gao Feldskun golf shoes. Yes. <laughs> Every time you walk, they go... <laughs> <laughs> do they come with a hat? Uh, no, they have hair, so... Oh. Yeah, oh, oh. they've got hair, so dish up. Eugene Causa <laughs> has left the building. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity. Our celebrity guest is in the building. He's proved himself through diverse roles, so much so that many assume he's like the characters he plays on screen. Scores of people would be surprised to learn that he's a father and a Sundowns fan. Some guys just win at everything, it seems. Others would be amazed that he can communicate in both verbal and non-verbal languages. So in whichever way you choose, please give a warm welcome to the multi-talented, the effervescent Warren Masemola. Halala, Dumelan, greetings, bonjour everybody. Thank you for having me. Muntwana. Muntwana. Tell us about the name Muntwana. Muntwana is my maternal grandfather's name. Yes, sir which is in Debele and pronounced Muntuan. Oh, Muntuan. So it's almost like a D sound. Oh, yes, but it's spelled with a T-L. Okay. So that is my pater- my maternal grandfather's name. Um, he used to own a butcher, and he was really clean guy, liked his three-peat suits. And oh, wow. Yeah, when I was born, yeah, my grandmother and my mother were like, Oh, Muntuan, hello. Why don't you use the name? I choose not to use it mm. in the media, in my work, because okay. of how people will pronounce it, Muntuana. And oh, so every yes. other they'll, time, somebody they'll says dishonor, Muntuana, they'll, they'll the dishonor him by yeah. getting it wrong. Yes. And it would start by me explaining, but more than anything, it would be a dishonor to the pronunciation of the name. Absolutely. So I choose to butcher this other one that I use, because they asked me when I graduated from drama school, what do you want to use as your stage name? And mm. I said, what's that? And they said, you can call yourself Tzigitzigiyo. And I was like, no, I've got a name. I'll butcher this one, Warren. Yes. So where's Warren from? Warren is a beautiful English name that my mom and father fell in love with. Mm. Um, They didn't share how they picked the name. I I, I can tell you. Do tell. I I, I suspect that your father was saying a name, but your mom on a samota, Warren? (laughs) Warren? Warren? And before you knew it, Warren. Yeah, yeah, because his name was Downton. And you ask him, what does yeah. Downton mean? And no, no, like, Downton, a- Downton means I'm a very posh black man <laughs> with a white name. And at 4 p.m. I have scones at the library. <laughs> and maybe that's why then he imparted it to his son, Warren. But yeah, that's how, that's how the two names came about. You are, or have, I don't know if you guys are still on stage at the Soweto Theatre. We just uh, wrapped on Sunday, the 1st uh, of October. We shall sing for the fatherland. We shall sing for the fatherland. By Zeke Simda. Professor Zeke Simda. Yo. Um, you know, the, the, the weird thing is I meet Bra Zeke's a lot of times. Yeah. But every time I meet him, I feel like I'm meeting him for the first time. But I also feel his greatness. You feel the, 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 the legacy that he has given us on stage in literature. How does it feel that you are on stage with him, for him? Hey, my man, it is, it is one of the biggest things that mm. I've ever done in my career. And by biggest, I mean like of the three. Yes. Uh, because he's a professor, man, mm. you know. So before I came into the arts, uh, 
all I knew about Brazeix, Professor Zeix, is yes. that he, he writes novels. Yes. And then I got to drama school and got to watch plays staged mm -hmm. and, and read plays that he wrote and, and, and novels that he wrote. And I think um, his history about being at Vets as a professor there mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. a lecturer rather. Um, and him just showing so much love he, he, we couldn't see the tears roll down, mm. but he even said and shared that we nailed it, we mm. hit home, yeah. the message was so clear, and he never imagined that in this time, 53 mm. or 56 years later, yes. we would stage it in that way, and he was really moved, which makes me feel like, wow. What is We Shall Sing for the Fatherland about, and how does it influence your views on what's happening in the country right now? We shall sing for our fatherland is a story about two soldiers who went into the bushes, mm. uh, exile in Fre particular. Freedom fighters. Freedom fighters yeah. uh, who went into um, exile and joined the MK mm -hmm. and to liberate their country. Mm. And in the play, we see uh, fast forward after them coming from the bush, they come back to a society that they fought for. It's independence now. It's independence. So, yeah. And the society doesn't recognize them. Mm. And things have changed so much that the law is against them and their freedom mm. when they as soldiers fought sacrificed for the very freedom and, and, and fought for the freedom. Sure. So they come back and they can't have that freedom mm. because now they are oppressed by the then government or the current government after they come back from mm. war. Mm. And they fight for it and and yeah, that's just how how the system uh, can jiggy jiggy mm. oppress you after you fought and liberated it mm. from uh, uh, the, the system. And in this play, Brazeix shows it through the character of Officiri and the two soldiers. Yes. It was... Uh, Officiri is in a wheelchair. Officiri is the police. The yeah. sergeant major is the guy in the wheelchair. Oh, yes, yes, sergeant major, yes, And yes, the yes, soldier yes. is the other o guy. Officiri is the, uh, the, the menacing cop. The menacing cop. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, in yes. Professor Zeix's real life, mm. he grew up in Lesotho. Yes. Uh, most of his life he spent in Lesotho, studied there, mm. wrote this play in 1959 when he was in standard 10, not grade 12. Imagine. Um, and, and put it in a trunk, and 10 years later, there was a competition, and I'm still playwright competition, and mm. he fetched the script from a trunk 10 years later and, stay, and, and, and handed it in, and it won a joint prize, uh, number one prize, mm. and he staged it in Deep Kloof Hall, at the Deep Kloof Hall in mm. 1959, and a few years later at the Market Theater. Imagine. It, it is mainly about his life experience, because Professor Zixim Da was also a PAC member mm. under the Lesotho government. Oh, and yes. PAC was a South African political party where his father, uh, Professor Zixim Da's father, mm. was the founding uh, member of the ANC Youth League, but mm. was never ANC. So for him, uh, it was a reflection of what liberation is mm. and what history is and funny enough writing, writing it in 1959 it still speaks to the current affairs of the country and the system right now in 2024 Hensa asked how it influences or how you view it based on what's happening in the country right now where a lot of liberators are feeling forgotten you know there's a former freedom fighters who formed a political party saying that nobody cares about us, so we're going to go our own way now. You know, it's, it's really funny that after... So my reflection upon this is that mm. we have people that went out to make history mm. and to fight for this country. And today, in the history that is in our syllabus in schools, the curriculum doesn't teach that history. And it, 30 it, years later... Well, yeah, 30 years later, they still do not teach that mm. it was, you know, I mean, people talk and, and, and there's research that is being made. And when somebody uh, schools you to say that, do you know that uh, we are not being taught the correct history? And I mm. say, but tell me, share the true history. Yes. What do you mean? And somebody says, Nelson Mandela did not spend 27 years in jail mm. on Robben Island. Mm. And you calculate it and you see it. Mm. 
and and then you see the rise and the celebration of a political party, the ANC. Mm. And you look at the other history, historical moments that makes and shape this country, mm. and you look at a political party like the PAC mm. that is no longer looked at um, as a whatever, let me not get that o political. Almost written out of history. Almost written out of history. Mm. But when you look at the two political parties, the other political party celebrates the struggles of the other party, like mm. Shopville, sure. uh, you know. Um, they have taken up ownership. They've taken up ownership mm. on that history, yet mm. they do not put it in the syllabus mm. for the children to know the truth about the history that shaped this country. Mm. Like people will say, Nelson Mandela sold out this country. But do we teach our children or uh, the next generation or younger generations about what happened in Cordesa, mm. what happened between AWB, uh, what happened with the death of Chris Hani, why was Chris Hani shot and mm. killed, mm. and why do people think that ANC might be cowards because then Mandela then had to negotiate with the IFP and the other African people, mm. the AWB, the, the Freedom Front, the, the, you know, the National Party. Mm. Um, there's history that is not spoken about and these elders that are still alive still share this history and it is unfortunate that their voices are almost like being dimmed, mm. you know, because mm. you, you have names that are put up and they say a street name is Jeff Masamola, but the name is Jeff Tamasamola, it's exactly. not Jeff Masamola. Yeah. So there's a history almost in intentionally hidden and, and in, in changing the name from Jafta to Jeff and, and just lightly celebrating him by giving like like name a street after and, 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 and in the bigger scheme of things a lot of people whose names are on street poles are not in a history book so what's the point yeah what's the point so keep if, 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 if we're gonna immortalize these people these heroes then let's do more than just put up a street sign yeah. Like, why is it not in a history book? Why is it not a chapter in the history the kids are learning? I mean, if why are the kids still learning about the United Nations, which is half the time useless? Because what I'm Sorry, talking I to. Sorry, I get upset. Because <laughs> what I'm talking to is is that. Um, um, oh, why am I losing my my? So what I'm talking to is, mm. we should teach our children about names like Bears Nodia. Yes. Joe Slovo, mm. Winnie Mandela, Jeff Masamola, mm. Jafta Masamola, um, Robert Sobukwe, and all of these people. Mm. Because you then realize when these elders share this information to say, how did 1976 start? Mm. It was because somebody was in Lesotho studying uh, there and they come back to South Africa because the school government are different and when they come home for holidays, the Bantu education system uh, in South Africa, the kids are in school. Mm. And, and when they interact after school and you realize that, oh no, hold on, these guys do not have the freedom that I have in Lesotho. Oh, yes. And then daily when they meet and talk about these things it's like but why do you want to study in africans mm. it, it, it's your right not to study in africans mm. and then you realize that it is because i live in these borders that i'm forced to study in africans mm. but i do not have the means to go to swaziland or lesotho or botswana to go study yes. in, in 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 other languages of my choice and sure. freely mm. that i can choose mm. and live freely and mm. enjoy my freedom and you realize that that is how 1976 was formed mm. and and don't just tell us about hector peterson this Seeds machine and in the other children mm. who are still alive, not just those who are dead, who are still able to tell this history, is what this show We Shall Sing for the Fatherland has done to me. I feel that we are not singing for the fatherland. There are, and we there, there are girls who are also at the forefront of 1976. We don't know their names. We're never told their names. Mama, yesterday I met... These, par these kids have parents, some of whom are still alive. Yeah. We don't know who these parents are. Why? I don't know if you know um, media, I call her a media guru, mm. not yet legend, but she is legendary. Mamshalo mm. Mbata. Uh, yes. Um, her parents, mm. I mean, her story, she was there at the forefront mm. of June 16 mm. as a young girl. Mm. And in that year, she had just done her matric and was waiting to go to university. Mm. And because his father and mother were already tortured heavily, mm. this is the first person I've had a conversation with one-on-one. Yes. -on -one. Mm. 
personally that her mother was jailed at number four the famous cell at constitution hill oh, yes, yes, things yes, yes. go down there but mm. only horrible things go down there mm, mm, mm. while he, her father was somewhere in lesotho trying to organize means for her to go to university sure. outside the country and then in that moment as she's washing the dishes mm. with her little brother then she sees bright lights and mm. at that time everybody was vigilant yeah she tells me this yesterday mm. and she hears her mom because she had just walked the father to catch a bus to lesotho mm. she hears her mom but doesn't see her mother and the mother says shalom mm. shalom tanam mm. balega mama boys mm. and hears gunshots mm. what comes to her mind my mom just died yeah grabs the younger brother runs out faced by bullets ba 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 somehow manages to duck dog dog duck and dodge the bullets mm. runs crosses the fence leaves the younger brother at another neighbor where the dobermans and mm. the community is scared to go into that house yes. but she as a young girl who is like 15 cuz she started school early mm. leaves the younger brother there and runs for safety And all of a sudden the people at her house because she's looking from afar mm. uh, there's a commotion and bravely walks there back to her house and the community is screaming kumani pumani bazon bulala because mm. police are now there going get out of we don't get out we're mm. going to shoot and burn the house in five minutes mm. and she's looking at what is supposed to be her life experience but it's her real life experience mm. 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 we need these elders to be able to speak freely sure. and we should be able to express our freedom freely without thinking that we will be put out of jobs or we would not have platforms to speak mm. for them for us and for generations to come because what we are do- what we are doing now is truly killing our people for mm. put history aside we're sure. killing ourselves mm. Mm. absolutely now at the end of we shall sing for the fatherland you are literally in tears why were you crying and was so, and, and and was it your character crying or was it warren crying it's both and it's an actor's choice mm. because ever since we started doing this rehearsals mm. warren as an actor i went through a whole lot of emotions like lots mm. because of the truth that is in the play sure And it, and it hurts it hurts mm. and, and, and 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 i think one of the reasons it hurts is your average black person from a township knows someone that gave 500% fighting apartheid that now feels why did i fight that's why it hurts that's exactly why it hurts so doing my research for my character as a sergeant major um really took me back there mm. and to my friends i say you know if i was born under those times i would be dead or i would be a veteran but not a part of the government because mm. of the truth the truth in what the movement was for mm. It's it gets personal when you do your research and you realize what the freedom fighters did to liberate this country. And after we had the liberation, we chose not to go with liberation and we chose to go with peace when peace, love and freedom was not exercised to us when we did not ask for those things to be done to us that were really bad. Mm. it gets really personal in research that you learn why comrade chris hani died mm. how it affected his wife his family his children who still don't have closure they are upbringing mm. and that i mean this is all through research before we cemented the show mm. i'm trying to bring you to how im- 
emotionally heavy it is for me to play that character such a major because mm. everything about it is true. true so you can't really separate yourself as a performer from the reality in the character mm. Mm. that in the research then you know we listened to a song that in 1994 we were, or 1992 were made to sing in churches and sunday schools and primary schools because i was there in 92 when I was standing to, and we were taught to, the, to sing this song, it was almost like our new national anthem. What, what was that song? South Africa, we love, we love you, our beautiful, beautiful land. land. Let's show the, the whole, whole world. world we can bring, bring peace, peace in, our in our land. Whose yeah. land? Mm. Who needs the peace in this land? Mm. At that time in 1992. Mm when so many Afrikaners are killing so many black people and arming, giving black people ammunition to kill themselves amongst themselves mm -hmm. because of a simple thing that we are fighting for, mm. that we shouldn't have asked for, which is our freedom. Sure. So it gets really personal that at the end of the, towards the end of the play, the two characters, Sergeant Major and his junior, the soldier, he says, Janabari, let us sing for our fatherland, mm. the land that we nourished with our sweat and blood, mm. our fatherland. Mm. And then when they sing, they can sing. Mm. And it is a, direct, a, dire, a director's choice and a theater license that we went with the choice Mm. It's heavy to sing that. Mm. Mm. When you have to say, Tina ban bom kondo sis mi sele, ugu abulala, wona la mapunu. And Batubam kondo MK veterans are not recognized today, mm. so their promise falls on dead soil. Mm. Um, as Babulalanga Amapunu, as per the comrade MK soldiers promised, mm. we didn't kill them. Mm. But today, when we have to tell our history and say, this is where Sizo Abulala Amapunu comes from, it, we don't mean it literally. Sure. This is our history, this is our story, this is our pain. But someone wants to stop you from singing about it. Why do they have to take people to court to say, kill the boa, the farmer? It is because in our history mm. and the pain that was brought about by them, mm. they can tell us that we can't sing such songs when all we were doing is reminding our people that Remember the people that liberated this country for you to be able to get on a bus. Not the, the back of the bus, the bus. Because before the back of the bus, you could not get on the bus. You could even get on it's, the bus. It's Pita Mokaba. Mm, mm. So do not name a stadium in Limpopo Pologwani Pita Mokaba and not allow us to talk about Pita Mokaba. Mm. That's papetry. Mm, mm. And, and, and there's also something that is borderline... I don't even is disrespectful or it implies that that the minute we hear someone singing a song like that we're going to go out there and kill people because it almost implies that that these people are so primitive the minute they hear a song they're going to go out there and kill people Hey, keep it dumb, keep it stupid. Like, uh, that, uh, Ronari Dom, that's what we do the minute a, a song says do this that's what we're going to go and do Tato, I'll tell you I say it a lot of times to people generally for free. Mm. People go through school yeah. from sub A until standard 10, grade 1 until grade 12, and they are being taught comprehension. There is maybe, let's say, not grade 1 and 2, right? Grade 3 to metric. Yeah. Comprehension in the language English is always there. I don't know today, but I trust it must be there because yeah. it's important. And if it's not, then we're creating, we're not even making it better, we're making it worse. Uh, like Jacob Zuma said. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> comprehension, like people do it in school for 10 years mm. and they pass really well. Yeah. And, and they even go through university mm. and pass really well mm. and, and, and they get a job. Sure. 
but it's almost like the comprehension they passed was to comprehend how to follow instructions to do the job, mm. but not to personally comprehend. Yeah. So as a problem, it's generally a lot of people have a problem, a comprehension. People do not comprehend mm. when you say to them, good morning, Tado, mm. and, and, and you say, hey, Tada. Mm. Okay, that's fine. But generally, the greeting of good morning is because I haven't seen you yesterday. Sure. I want to know how are you since mm. yesterday. Good mm. morning, Tad. Hey, mm. good morning, Warren. Mm. How are you? Hey, man, I'm not fine. What happened? Mm. Low shading yesterday. Ah, we all have the same problem. Mm. I'm truly interested in knowing how you are, how sure. you're doing. Mm. Comprehend that. Mm. Common sense is not always common. So, mm. keep problem yabona. Like, it, it, it is very stupid for you not to accept and understand and comprehend that this is just but history. Mm. So, so, so you want us to, to, to call, uh, you want us to, to, to embrace a statue that is Paul Kruger Square, but when we look at what Paul Kruger did to our country and our people, you can't allow us to, we don't even need your permission to allow us. And, and but why are we even having that conversation? You know I, what I, mean? I think what's even weirder <clears throat> is despite how you try and make it clear that Maburu did not refer to farmers, but to the system of the Nats. That's what Maburu was. Mm. If you see a police car, you know, run Maburu Aita, mm. you, know, the, you know, the system is coming, the cops are coming. It had nothing to do with any farmer. Mm. But because of Renari Tom, when we hear the song, we want to think, let's go attack a farmer. This is why we need It's to insulting. It's insulting. It is. To say the least. It is. So... I find that places like We Shall Sing for the Fatherland raises those issues. Mm. And that's why everybody who is a theater goer and non theater going people can relate to the subject because it is a topic and a subject and mm. a conversation that we are not having. And it but, touches us. But, but it, we are living it. But we are living it. Mm. But it touches us the most when we see. When we see it and, and, and more truths mm. are revealed f mm. for us, that there is a lot of untruth. Mm. So why would you want to live in the unrealness sure. if real is real? Mm. I mean, why would you say the sun comes up at night when you clearly see that it comes up during day? Mm. Like is Kekamko, these people Baba Domo Baba Domilengate. Sure. A deeper, a deeper. I'll, I'll give you another example. Like uh, the Gregorian calendar is something mm. else. But when you look at the time that we use more life in, mm. is that when does day start, mm. Tato? Mm. The day starts when the sun comes up. Sure. And when does day end? Mm. When, when the, the sun sunsets. goes down. Mm. So why would the day start in the middle of the night? Mm. And they say it is the first minute of the first hour. It is midnight mm. that the day... Okay. Why you try it is but, it's midnight, but, but, but day is starting. Exactly, but you're saying. But now that you... But, had, but Masa Hasos. <laughs> Masa Hasos. <laughs> like, Kanja and Maafri. So even though you and I now have revealed that moment, we understand it. Yeah. Are you going to change your time on your watch to go from the first hour being six o'clock? No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because you choose not to make it happen. But it's and that's system. what we choose with our daily things. We mm. choose to say, yeah, but, blind, but you know what? They brought us McDonald's. It's okay. Let them out try some more. Yeah, because then we don't have to kill a cow to eat a, a, a slice of beef patty. Mm. But still, it's because you don't know that it's not a beef patty. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so when I came from Ethiopia uh, uh, once upon a time, I used to wear two watches because I was trying to get my brain used to uh, communicating with you to say, Warren, we start at 5 past 11 mm. in the morning. Mm. So enough on that, it would be 5 past 5 in the morning. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, so get over the guy on a mentally mm. for myself. What, what did the trip to Ethiopia do for you? Oh. And, and, and what were you doing in Ethiopia? Whoa. I was doing, <laughs> I was doing another theater show called when Swallows Cry. Yes. And it was three actors in the show, Christian Skumbi, Mpo Tutu, mm. and myself. And yes. all three of us played three characters. Mm. And all these three characters were not based in South Africa. Mm. But um, 
So the characters I played, so it was about refugees, mm. basically. Mm. So then we en- we went to perform the show at the African Union, oh, yes, yes, yes. HQ mm. in Addis Ababa, and it was it was uh, a summit of that year, mm. Mm. and we were there for like seven days. Mm. I met a guy called Yafet Makinen. Yeah. Oh, I fell in love with that guy. The mother of my child was like, "We're not older than Yafet," <laughs> because I love Yafet. Yes, yes. He imparted a whole lot of knowledge. Lemo mm. um, uh, Africa. Uh, why am I forgetting his name? But we were at the African Union. We were in Addis Ababa. I had never had such uh, wise, intelligent information about the life of Africans and oh, the yes. history of Africa, mm. religious-wise and Haile politically-wise. Haile Selassie, the Queen, the, Rastafari, yes. Zeme, mm. Rastafari. I went to go visit the cathedral. I went to see the tombstone near him, Emperor Haile mm. Selassie mm. and the Queen. Um, I, I wished I went to the other churches, Bola Libela, but mm-hmm. it's a travel and a trip you need to organize and plan for. Uh, just conscious people, not just black conscious, but like conscious people. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about language. I learned that um, all the languages that are in the world come from uh, some language that is in Ethiopia. And they even gave me examples that you find it, that you find in Setswana, Sesoto, Sebedi, Venda, and then you find the in Amharic and other languages. Oh, yes. yes. So, uh, language, oh, like all languages, oh, like when I was in Ethiopia, like I wanted to lose my passport mm. so that mm. maybe the embassy can keep me there for like a month while they finish me with another one. It's awakening to be in mm. Ethiopia. You come mm. back. Uh, should, uh, should Africans put Ethiopia on the bucket list for places to visit? Because often we're quick to want to go to your Miamis and your New Yorks and your Parises. Yeah. Um, but, you know, how many of us want to go to Timbuktu? I was going to take you there. Or, or yeah. go to Ethiopia and learn about yeah. um, life there and how, you know, as Africans, we have a lot of what started in Ethiopia is what we are doing. Yeah. But we never pay homage to Ethiopia for that. Or we don't even know enough. We don't even know enough about our own history. How, how, how are we going to know about Ethiopia? So that's why I'm saying the history in our syllabus and our curriculum is a problem. It's actually because it's shocking. because then we will never learn mm. those things unless some other people who are knowledgeable will share that information mm. because it will never even be in your interest to travel to those countries because of the system that uh, that, that 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 nourishes you uh, to say Cape Town is a holiday destination mm. what is there mm. Robben Island what's mm. there Robben Island is an island where people were in prison not for nice reasons sure. and mostly political reasons that had a lot to do with liberating this country mm. so how can you then teach that as a tourist attraction. We take Mali, for instance, when Tabon Begi was president, he said there are scribes and scrolls there that have everything about everything that ever exi- that, that exists in the world, especially how it was created. Sure. And I mean, it's, it's, it's considered the best university in the world. Mm-hmm. And you have Ethiopia. So until you tell more Africa about the true the truth about time, mm. they will never tap into the idea of visiting Ethiopia. And I think we should make it a tourist destination because we have to be intentional, Molaifi. Mm. You have to be intentional, Molaifi. Uh, we named our son uh, Mansa for the mere fact, Yaore. Should it happen that Adzube Nyaube or Cat or Mandrakes in mm. the future, mm. the name should remind him that mm. I am a Mansa. Sure. Just as you ask me, what does Mundrana mean or Warren mean or a mm. name means, then he will be able to know that Mansa in English translates to an empire, sure. a sultan. Mm. But who else was named Mansa? And he will learn that there was a Mansa Musa. Oh, who yes. was Mansa Musa? Mm. The wealthiest person to have ever lived mm. up to today. Mm. Mm. And what was Mansa Musa uh, known for to be this wealthy up to today, 2024? Mm. He had carriages of gold on his train and wh- wherever he traveled the residue of gold would just drip everywhere mm. villages everywhere where people lived mm. and what was the currency in Mali mm. it was gold absolutely 
And where is the gold today? It's in England. Mm. So if we don't teach, and you, we don't even need to leave telltale signs, we must be intentional. Mm. And unapologetic. And unapologetic. Because it's almost like Rabatawa. Buma. You know, it's like it's almost like Rabatawa, the people that came and uh, pillaged our continent. Who are they? And, 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 and a lot of them treat us like we are guests on our own continent. It's almost like Rabatawa. You know what it's like? It's almost like someone coming into your house. And deciding that, okay, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, and I'm staying. Now you're in your own house, but the guy who came into the house. How does that and, make and, you and, feel? And, 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 and the minute you want to stand up and talk, it's like, no, we don't do that here. Or what would people say? So then, what did Nelson Mandela fight for? If he's the hero? Seemingly nothing. Uh, Gerard and other uh, uh, people who liberated this country. Mm. Were they not fighting for the freedom of Hore? As a black person in your country, mm. you can't be sitting in Deep Kloof mm. after you moved me from my own place mm. and you moved me to Deep Kloof. You now come into Deep Kloof to tell me, what are you doing? Mm. Sleep. Why is your light on? Mm. Who's this one visiting? Mm. Why is he from Botswana visiting you? Mm. What are you guys talking about? No, this is treason. Mm. So now... <laughs> to hold that reason in ourselves because we are not talking about it because when we talk about it amongst ourselves we say don't upset people yeah. and, and, and that's why then people get so upset and they ban buildings and they ban universities and they ban the structures because when the government then was not listening to the mm. people mm. to say leave us to be and enjoy our freedom you can't come into my house and ask me for my pass, uh, my pass book mm. Now we are saying, let's not make that noise because these people will come to your house and say, give me your ID. I'm blacklisting you. You are no longer going to be a farmer. In the Farmers Agriculture Conference, you are not even invited anymore. Mm. Cut your ship. <laughs> oh, oh, ship. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, no, not that ship. Not that ship. Not that ship. <sighs> that ship can go. So, yeah, yeah and, and that's why people will revolt, and that's why people will fight, and that's why many more buildings will burn. Sure. It happened in Gabu Putatwan mm. when the ANC government was saying, mm. and then the people said, okay, ANC, sure. arinya mm. what did they do? Mm. They banned. Mm. And what, now, when the ANC is doing vibes to them, what do they do? They ban. Because mm. that's what you know. Because. You're a ban, or my ban. Freedom, freedom, arena freedom, and worse, we are not creating spaces. And, we're, and we're hungry, and we and 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 it's like one thing after another. It's, man, almost, it's, all, it's almost like people can't catch a break. They can even catch a break. That's why they shoot people on the highway mm. and drive very fast cars. Because why would you want to be driving fast? The destination is not going to move, my man. Mm. Huh? Hey, leave, leave leave home on time. Yeah, and 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 I think. It's the, probably the saddest thing, especially with African leaders, this thing of self-importance that I must be in this expensive German sedan with blacked out windows and, Do you know what and, that and, and a motorcade. Because not for me, if you are a proper leader about the people and you deliver, you'll yeah. never need security. You will never need security. Because you are delivering. So essentially what you and I agree on is that society are high walls, mm. electric fans, mm. and tinted windows with bulletproof cars, SUVs, mm. is created by the problem that we are not solving mm. that ends up being the need for your security. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a majority of people who are hungry. Mm. And in Kazulu Bar in Lala, Ibanga Ulaga, Musu no Laga, Osa Bambum Shi, Yingako, Uzo Pichiza, Imodium Lungo, a robot team, smash and grab. Because that iPhone uh, 14 can at least get me a thousand rand. Mm. And you, after it's snatched from you, are not bothered. Why? Because you have Apple insurance. Mm. So you are not fixing the problem. You are actually spitting mm. in the face of the problem. Mm. When they come up to your window and say, I have a degree. Mm. I know you work inside this building at Omushwal. Mm. 
please, can you give me an apprentice, a leadership or whatever? You roll your window up. But you forget they know you and that you work in this building. They know your number plate, your registration plate. Mm. And they have friends who are unemployed, who know things. Mm. And then you get surprised when you're in your shower and there are seven people in your house mm. and your alarm did not go off and your Rottweilers did not do anything. Mm. And nothing happened. And they clean you for seven days mm. because you're the CEO mm. of Omushua. I was just asking for 3,000, but now I'm going to clean 3 million from you. Because you are not dealing with the problem. Mm. How do we deal with the problem? Hey, shh. I myself don't have the answer. Mm. But my answer to that would be... My, let, let me tell you what I think needs to be done to deal with a lot of what the problem has become. Because we're dealing with a lot of leaders who have no business being in leadership in the first place or whose only qualification is the fact that we're in the trenches together therefore get versus who is the best possible person for this position that I was in the trenches with if we're going to stay, okay let's stay in the trenches okay Let's stay with the people that we're in the trenches with, because that happens politically across the across the, the, the globe. Yeah, exactly. But are you having the best possible people doing the post, best possible delivery for your people? And and again, now I'm not going to say this, Aja. Every government, Wajewa. But if you are eating before you even deliver the road or a clinic or a house, then what is it all for? And then La Makala, when people uh, start uh, 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 being agitated, when people start saying, we're going to burn this, we're going to burn that, when you're doing nothing for them. When Warren can take, uh, um, you know, 500 million rand to go build houses for people, but doesn't deliver houses. But Warren is still driving around in his expensive car. Warren is not in jail. But we won't kill any I am, I am not affiliated with any political party, especially mm. in South Africa <laughs> or no. anywhere in the world. But what I want to say is mm. that I want to bring everybody to this observation. Mm. Think about it. All the, deputy, all the deputies to a minister within a ministry, mm. what do they do Monday to Friday? Deputy president... <laughs> Deputy, yeah, arts and culture, <laughs> all the deputies, what did they do Monday to Friday? So what are you saying? When, when the president is not in the country, what is the deputy president doing and where is he? Mm. That is for you to observe and answer. Mm. Why, so speaking about the ministry that I work under, which mm. is arts and culture, not sports, mm. because they were separate before. Mm. So before they were joint and before they were not in the ministry of sports arts and culture mm -hmm. do we have a dingan tobela mm -hmm. or a professor zeik mm -hmm. who's done the works of the arts or sport that have like lived, credo mood that have lived and breathed it the art mm -hmm. i said i'm not of any political party mm -hmm. and not affiliated with any mm -hmm. Why is it that bugs can be moved around from ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry? Okay, mm. let's What does he specialize in? They say Vets gives you the edge. Every year, how many kids are getting the edge and are on the edge to deliver? Mm. JHB Johannesburg, yeah, Boma. It's a monthly thing. Mm. Like Josie Boma, it's a monthly thing. Mm. But we've known her Josie Ibodile underneath way before a majority of us came to Joburg. The but we have town planners, mm. uh, city managers, people who just deal specifically with those things, mm. who are masters at it. They have masters, if not honors, if not degrees, if not need a three months work experience because you again are going to need a three year experience from them for you to hire them. Mm. But you are not hiring them. Instead, Tato is going to be 
on the podcast, Warren is going to act. When Tato is acting, mm. then uh, Warren will do the podcast. Mm. Mm. So it hurts. Mm. And that's why, Gary, that's why people will revolt mm. when we don't fix things. So we must take these people. Because mm. people are leaving the country. Yeah. We have chartered accountants who are in Ireland and Scotland. And they say, don't tell me. And you say, but chartered accountants, they get money. So they're like, don't tell me about my country. Because we cannot implement the things that needs to be implemented. And we are not satisfied to stay in a position mm. of a partner or a senior manager for 10 years, but not implement the change. Sure. And guess what? Oh, I am at PricewaterCoopers. Mm. No. They leave. Mm. So is it going to be like that, that Warren must leave and go to Hollywood for, for Warren to be a great actor or it's the South African film industry to say, wow, and then when Warren we tell wins our a, stories and they're accepted globally. And, and then when Warren wins an award, um, all of a sudden he's one of us. What do you mean? What do you mean? You know, Minus Shutdown is a documentary that won an award mm -hmm. in America. I think mm -hmm. it must have been the, award, uh, the Oscars or something. Yeah. And the minister of <laughs> Natim Teto then at the time said the, congratulations. The, the, minister, the minister of congrats and condolences. Ah, you call him that. He said um, congratulations to the cast and crew of Minus Shutdown. Imagine. Who was the cast? It's the Minus it's the who minus. was short. It was not a cast and crew. They were short. So how do you congratulate dead people who were fighting for just an increase? But maybe money. technically, so really no, but technically, had they not been short, they wouldn't have been a documentary, they wouldn't have been an award. So that's what he so, so maybe he was being technical when he said congrats to the cast and crew. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's what people see us doing, and that's how people... And it and it, yeah, head, but there is no but. Yeah, head, mm. and it's not correct. It's yeah. not right that every day we go to sleep with this, with these issues that can be resolved. Yeah. Like on on the highway, bulbs are being put up. Mm. The streets are brighter. The started ya penti were barrier lines. You understand what's going on. Yeah, it's that time because they can't do it in November, December because mm. the streets are busy. Sure. So you have to enjoy that, that bliss and pleasure food, 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 now. Food parcels loading. So that come next year, we can thrive. Absolutely. <laughs> My man. So get puppy. I, I could talk to you the whole day, like the whole day. But, um, you know, you have to go to your next appointment. <laughs> and, 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 and we've run out of time. But we will do a part two. We're going to play a game called When Last. Okay. When, when last did you see someone else on stage or on screen and said, Damn, I wish I'd gotten that role. My friend Mutusi Mahano. Yes. Uh, I was sitting with him at the Saftas this past weekend. Yeah. I love Mutusi. Oh, mm. I mean, people say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Denzel Washington, mm. stage or film or whatever. Yeah. There are other actors globally and in South Africa. Mm. But I love my friend Mutusi when he, when he arts. Mm. Hi, you what? can smell the fat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mutus, like in an ad, he's mm. playing a robot. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's on. Yeah. You see him on stage. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> you, you watch him on Netflix and see him there playing that writer. Yes, and, and yes, you, yes, 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 yes. And you're like, oh, Mutusi. Yeah. Is it because I don't have the beard? <laughs> but it's not about the beard and the hair, Warren. Hey, Mutusi. No, hey. no, 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 no. He kicks ass. Oh, he kicks ass. No, no, he bars. kicks Mutusi Mahano. Yeah. Yo, yo, oh, Mutusi. Yeah, that is Mutusi Mahano. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to debate who you have a crush on, Mutusi or uh, Mr. Makono in, in uh, Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, a, I have a whole lot of uh, male, male lovers. I, hey, yo, yo, I'm a lover, yo. When last did you feel robbed about a role you played? Whether, it, whether it's an award or just critical acclaim? I played a character called uh, Steaky on Ring of Lies, yes. 161, the channel on DSTV, uh, was starting out with telenovelas. So mm -hmm. first it was like a season of 52 episodes, yeah. and it was commissioned uh, for a, a novella, a mm -hmm. telenovela, 180 mm -hmm. episodes. My man, like, 
I was playing alongside Vele Manenje. I love you, Vele. Um, see, I love a lot of people. <laughs> so um, I was, I was, my storyline with Vele was yeah. coming to an end. Sure. It was kickers in the first season. Mm. Uh, but when we went into the no telenovela, it was almost like they didn't have a story for mm. us. Mm. So we said to the EP, we're like, yo, man, mm. we, we love this show. And we really feel like this show would be different without the two of us. Yeah. Please may we workshop. Yeah. And... Yeah, with so much love, she allowed us to workshop on a Saturday, mm. brought in the head writer and a couple of writers who were part of the team on the show. And we wrote our story, gave them a couple of beats, and we managed to stay on the show until the end. Oh, wow. And when we got nominated mm. for this award, twice I didn't win it. Mm. And I gave it my all, bro. Like... You know, like I spoke Sebedi, mm. Sa Sa Rasukukuni, the yeah. district. I in said, fact, didn't you move in with a Pedi family so that you could learn properly? No, I I, I went home every Saturday, yeah. uh, every weekend I went home, yeah. and my friend's uh, nephew yeah. who was at T uh, TNG, uh, mm. TUT, um, a student there, Kimo Pedi wao jua So this Pedi sabore. So I used to sit down with shoes, ah, yes. and and we used to translate word for word, a proverb for proverb, Yo. sentences, dialogue. You gave everything. And I paid him. Yo. And, and twice when we got nominated for this award, this was the only time I wrote a speech mm. because you were I mean, ready. ever in all the awards that I've had and attended, this yeah. was the only time I wrote down a speech. It was twice mm. for this role. Yeah. And, and I would tell Shoes and I say, Shoes, you have to watch the awards. I'm going to mention you on TV. Mm. And How did you feel when the award didn't come? Uh, the second time when it did, I mean, the first time it was just like, mm, okay, yeah, I can see, yeah, those actors are hot, actually, mm. Warren, you're not the only actor in South Africa. Mm. Oh, the second one, mm. when I didn't win it, and I saw who they gave that award, or who the award went to, I said to the person next, sitting next to me, I was like, oh, can't, it was on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't regret that moment. <laughs> You, I don't regret that moment. You swore at one Vios Choice Awards. I did who? You swore. What do you mean? Oh, I thought you meant I made a vow. No, 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 no. No, my man, I don't do that. Not on national TV. Eh? No, what do you mean? What did you hear? You didn't swear what swear. did you read? Eh? Did you read it or did you hear it? I heard you. Were you watching? I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what you said. But were you watching? I'm sure I saw the clip. Yeah, you see, that's what clips do because uh -huh. they normally are backed up with a caption. So you were not so, so you were not swearing on live TV during an award ceremony. Which awards were this? Wasn't well, it the Viewers Choice Awards? Well, the Viewers Choice Awards. Yes. Hey, but Papa. Oh, so now you remember? La Papa, like <laughs> La Papa. Don't don't wax your ears. It's not healthy. You must visit an ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist. Mm. I'll clear it for you guys. It's about time I clear it because mm. you know there was a point where I had to apologize. I was like, I'm not gonna apologize mm. for something I didn't do. Sure. So Presley Chonyakai mm. is nominated for this award. Yeah. I was. I've won it. This was in 2020. 2020, yes. yeah, three weeks before level five lockdown be mm. uh, because of COVID. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2020, in 2019, I was nominated mm. and I won the award, mm. but I was not there to receive it. I was in Uganda in Kampala doing a theater show. Yes, sir. So Presley goes up and he receives the award for mm. me and he bigs me up like I was receiving the award myself. He says, sure. uh, clearly I'm not Presley Chonea I mean, uh, clearly I'm not Warren Masamla, I'm Presley mm -hmm. Chonea mm -hmm. This one goes out to Mama Zala, but uh, Bagodi Ele, Soshanguva, Mama Zala, Warren, Ole Rata, Plaine, Lina Laha, last one, I get Montuan. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Dobeza, Ata, and Dobeza Chumia. So now, 2020, I'm nominated again with Presley, mm -hmm. but I make it to the awards. Yeah. And I had just taken a, a young man who just graduated from drama school, and I was like, come experience what mm. the industry is. Yeah. And, and meet people, sure. writers, directors, sure. famous people, celebrities, whatever. Mm. How the category comes up. Mm. And I say, I, Pinchaga, how I, Libaring. And then it goes, and the winner is Warren Masemul. I look at Presley. Mm. I look at this boy that, I, that was my date, and I'm like, ah. Mm. 
And then I have to go up and receive the award. Sure. So I was disappointed Presley's not getting because mm. for the role he played on the river, yes. oh, he's, no, no, on can't touch him. Can't touch him. Ah, he's on another level. He's on another level. Can't touch him. So then I'm saddened, but I have to go take and accept the award. So mm. I take it in. So I grab the mic from Kaiser Jr., and then I walked there just to catch a breath. Mm. And then I came, I come back. Because I did not prepare a speech. Mm. Mm. The time you prepared a speech, they robbed you. They robbed so, so you didn't prepare a speech this then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. I hurt her? Yeah. yeah. So then I give thanks to Presley. I say, hey, thank you very much, everybody who voted for me for the, mm. to win this award. I didn't expect to win this award. I mean, I'm winning this award for the second time after being nominated for it three times mm. since the inception of the mm. awards. Mm. Uh, so this is quite big time for me. I mean, Presley, Benjaga, Tobeza, I thought it would be a winner. Sure. I mean, Ungezeza Maseba. Presley, Tobeza, Benjaga, Ungezeza Maseba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? You're the shit. You are the if, shit. If you wanna, if you want. Yeah. So if you say you're the shit, is it is it is it swearing? So did they ask you to apologize? Hold up, and then fast forward. Mm -hmm. I say to everybody that took their time to mm -hmm. vote for me, mm -hmm. I thank you, especially the the people who are in Ward 34 or mm -hmm. Ward 36, mm -hmm. where my mom was laying. Sure. Critically, uh, and I said thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and I said to them and the audience, I said, you guys got me stupid. You, got, you guys got me feeling stupid, mm. like a mother father. Mm. So how the fuck? My man, how can I think about people who are on their deathbeds, mm. gospel mm. Lele, me, old lady who's also dying at the same sure. time and say mother fuck. Mm. I mean, mm. and mm. so I would never, mm. and it hit me the most because my mom had to tell me, apologize. Mm. And I said, Mom, I was thanking you. Sure. Mm. You lost Mama a year later. Yeah. When last did you reminisce about conversations that are really memorable that you had with Mama? So, every time I get paid, mm. I remember my mom. Cause what do you what do you remember? My tithe would go to her. Oh, okay. I don't I don't I don't go to church. Oh, yes, yes, to yes, church. Yes. But ten percent must go somewhere. Absolutely. Like literally mm. After we lost my dad in ninety five, when the country was turning and and I had to go to school with Africanists and mm. do all my subjects in Africans mm. after after liberation and freedom. Me already Sure. So my 10% would go to her, more than 10%. You know, my old lady, hardcore. Um, I, I, I reminisce of her when I get paid. Mm. I reminisce of her when I get a job or a contract. Mm. I reminisce of her on her birthday, the 30th of November, because he shares it with my friend, mm. my really, really tight, 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 tight friend, Tauma Sarumuna. True. Um, if, I, if I was not with my mom on the 30th, uh, mm -hmm. I'd be with Dao celebrating mm -hmm. his birthday. Mm -hmm. So I remember her on her birthday. I remember her on the date, he, the date she died. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and every other time, Mansalifika, mm -hmm. Ahola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My next question was going to be, when last did you cry? But it just happened now. So um, I, I You can it. ask it because I, I can answer it. Uh, I cry, my man. Like, uh, I cry, I think, maybe twice a day. Mm. It's, it's, it's emotions, and I don't hold them back, and I don't lock them. Mm. Mm. I am a Christ. Mm. Like, have I you, enjoy have, it. Have you ever cried during very good sex? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I couldn't believe it. I was like, yo, when? I did get back. When? <laughs> like, you, I never imagined. You, you, you. So I was like, you, 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 you. You, 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 yeah. Why, Chukucha? Why, Chukucha, we are not going to. Hey. 
kabona di le tswaso ka ra mfana o lla le setso o lo go bex it like ya no go ro o lla le ak ak ga khala le ra wa khala le le tsaka ile gore mane le but yeah i'm a christ man and i encourage anybody uh, i mean women are like because basadi abasala because mm. bana lidi uh, those propellers it, what do you it call it comes them? at a cost now <laughs> yeah it comes at a cost you know <laughs> the makeup lady must come in yeah. the camera must stop rolling sure, sure. you know just on red carpet mm. because all this are going we now what exactly. no 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 as we cry my man mm. we don't care yo you have to cry mm. you have to laugh you have to tap into your emotions because sure. Ke mo lefatse mo hona le di mental health illness hona le di depression hona le di heart attack hona le di chest pain si hona le di alsa so botla you have to burp you have to laugh you have to pressure release live the life sure because i spoke to one dead person and they said enjoy your life while you're still alive because there is no life once you die you dead when you die, you did. Sure. You, there, there's no life. You can't be like it's all and having ten year old star. Ah, mm. ten year old star manje. Sure. If you can't afford it, ten a ikayo star. Unge nenda we nufa na na banya bantuwa. Yes. Four star mo life ing. Ose mbialo ya. Oya mo lefa zin wanyi wa guys. Don't take it lightly. Like wanyi wa and regardless to stop a get a baby girl lady with that we can't cry. No. Sure. Crying is the least of our problems. Our problems are the ones that are making us cry, and our happiness and moments we celebrate are mm. the ones that make us cry. So we should. It's an emotion, man. Let go. Hmm. All the time, la lifika. Hundreds. Um, in fact, our sons share name. Um, my eight-year-old um, kilifika. Then, when last did you feel bad about how you reprimanded him or disciplined him? That maybe you've now changed in how you parent him. Ish. So this year, mm. he started school, play school, mm. school. How old is the figure? He just turned three in yeah. July, mm. in June, in June. Mm. So we took him to school at the beginning of the year. Mm. And so, you know, they have their own home comforts. Sure. Like, so his is a shark, a, a shark, a shark de dude. Mm. A teddy from Shaki, shark, mm. baby shark, baby shark, mm. and a, a, a dragon that he calls a dinosaur, but today we call it a dragosaur, and mm. then eventually we will call it a, we'll a dragon. Mm -hmm. And and he's got uh, all animals of the farm, like mm. small like that. So it's been the hardest thing to do when we leave the house to mm. say, Papa. Teacher Mimi doesn't allow this at school. Mm. You can't bring your toys to school. Yeah, 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 in Chwata, man. Because I don't want him, I don't want the last moment of him and I be a sad one before he starts his day. Before the exam. Because I believe it will influence the rest of his day. Yeah, he's there the whole day. And, 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 and if he's day, sad on the way to school, you know? Yeah. Now then, it means I'm sad on the way to school, mm. dropping him off, and so, I'm so, sad. So are you, are you are you like me? Are you one of those parents that you'll discipline your child and then you feel bad about it after yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I could you see the the, the natural emotional yes. change and how it affects them. Mm. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it yes. positive? Is it negative? Yeah. So I ain't sorry about that thing. Mm. So. Yeah, what I do now is when he sleeps, mm. then I clean the house of toys. Like yeah. I hide them. Mm. And so one time I hid even the car keys. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to leave for school. We couldn't find the keys. And, and we, yeah, I had to find the spare keys, but mm. they were too far to find. Mm. But eventually fetch the, the spare keys. So now I hide everything. Mm. That when he wakes up, it's just breakfast. Focus is breakfast yeah, and school. Yeah, breakfast, bath, and school. Sure. When last did you go to bed hungry? Two. When last did you go to bed on an empty stomach? Oh. It was... So the other side. This year? Mm. This year already? Yeah. Yo? It was not a, a fast. Mm. 
but I just wanted to stretch myself mm. and mourn my mom. True. It was a year after she had passed. Ah, yes, 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 yes. No, 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 2022. Mm. Not this year, this is 2023. Yeah, it was, was last year. Yeah, this year is two years since she passed. Yeah, mm. so last year. Because, mm. yo. Yeah. When last did you sleep on an empty stomach because there was no money? And you had no choice? It was a long time ago. Mm. It was after drama school, I was sharing a cottage with a friend of mine, Dao. So, I let Dao let her affair. Yeah, we met at drama school 2003. Uh, broken hearts, everything. Sundown. You've so, shared it all. Uh, <laughs> everything. We've shared a bed, a bus, yeah. uh, girls. Hey, We've shared a lot, yeah. Mm. So, uh, we were so broke, we had just graduated from drama school and mm. we believed we we're not going home to be called back for work or we are not going to, like we were going to soldier on. Yes. So we didn't have anything on us. And so, but I smoked cigarettes and together we smoked weed. Mm. And mm. and Borotobama Pakistani would be like foreign. Mm. But one time we didn't have that foreign for Boroto. Or an onion. Or an onion. Yeah. But more than the onion more thing, we took the, the peel of an onion because all we had was my last two cigarettes, mm. the ganja and the leaves of the weed. So we rolled the weed, mm. cut the leaf, yeah, the onion. Oh, wow. And we smoked and we slept mm. and we woke up and there was still no plan. Mm. No food. And we chilled. Now mm. there was nothing to smoke. Mm. I think it was two days. Madhu there? Yeah, two days. Mm. Hey, man. Ratswara getlala. Rismaela. Ratsatsa vaselina. And smoking doesn't help because it makes you want to eat. It makes you eat. more hungry. And, <laughs> and anything we could get from anybody we knew was weed. Yeah. So... You just got more weed. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid to... Oh, sharp. Hey, sharp. Man, man. Hey, I can't know why. And then... Sure. Ah, here... Three cigarettes. Yeah. If they say, here's five rent to cigarettes, then we're going to buy food for survival. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, hey, graduating straight after drama school, mm -hmm. man, it was tough. Mm -hmm. It was real. It's been a blessed journey, though, for you. It, it was, and it is. When, because when last did you pinch yourself about this journey? It was that time, and I said, Dao, mm -hmm. we have to do something. I don't know how I found myself a gig that would pay me 500 rands a week mm. for doing five shows, one show a day. So it was basically 100, 100 rands. bucks a show. It was promoting Castle Milk Stout in mm. Anglo Platinum mines there. So we'd mm. leave uh, observatory bedrooms at what? Four in the morning. So you stay in Muka, see the more, more bedroom. Yeah, it yeah. was the cheapest suburb in Johannesburg. That's where y YFM was there at the time. I know, yeah. at the corner, yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, this lady would pick me up with two other dancers from Yeovil, young girls, mm. and I'd be the MC. These girls would be dancing there, like mm. Dumchaka, and I'm speaking Fanagalo there. These old men are hungry, they don't have enough money, but hell, they drink, man. Mm. Now, I'm here to promote Castle Milk Stout to them. Yeah. And that gig for that day is a hundred rand, but I don't receive it on the day. I'll receive it on a Friday Jeez. as 500 rands. Mm. But, you know, like, yo, at least on the way they're buying us something to eat. Yeah, that's per diem. We have one meal a day at least. Uh, I have to come back with that meal yeah. to share with Dao. Or if, if, if she's not buying the food for us, she's like, here's hundred rands, buy yourself food. I, me, I hold on to that hundred rands. Because Dao must also, Dao must also eat. Yeah, give bean, give fish oil, give a No, hundred bucks goes a long That's it. You just cook up, you say onion, you say salt, and then you eat. And then the sachet of or chicken is in your head. You imagine it. And when you're an actor. We we both so, actors, so, we so, so 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 you can imagine caviar with pap and you are rocky. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, that's why Leila or not feel like in Norwalk. So can as in Norwalk. So can that's why raw salt. Yeah. So yeah, that was then, and then I pinched myself. I was like, yo, man. And then we lived on that five hundred rand a week. 
until mm. I vowed that, you know what, I'm scared of going broke, I'm mm. uh, at some point in my life and I'm mm. not going back there and I will have a family in my life in the future and I do not want to have the fear of poverty in my yeah. life. Yeah. So that's when I pinched myself and I, and that fear of, um, I started having, developing a fear of not being employable mm. as an actor. Oh yes. Because that's how we operate, mm. uh, we are contract workers. Mm. So that fear of not being employable mm. is the one that changed things for mm. me and it's because I pinched myself mm. at that moment. No, no, but, but what I meant though, when last did you pinch yourself in disbelief that you've been this blessed in your career? This place mm. where I am now? Mm. Man, it was when I was doing work for uh, Black is King for Beyonce. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I lost my mind for a moment then. Mm. Like, imagine you are Beyonce and, and your son is Lefika. Mm. So I'm thinking, oh my word, Beyonce must be sitting with Blue Ivy, and Blue Ivy must be going like, oh, mama, mama, who's that guy with no hair that plays the sky in Black is King? Mm. And imagining that Beyonce might just say, oh, that's Warren. Yeah! <laughs> I want you at that moment, and he won, and he won, and I'm thinking it, and I'm like, God, I'm fan of my soul, man. My, sure. my big brother's my soul, man. Sure. Because when I'm fan of my soul, man, all sure. So I'm like, oh my word. Mm. Hey, man, I'm fan of my soul. Then think about Disney Plus is coming to the country. Yes. Disney Plus is going to play Black is King. Jiggy, jiggy, hola, lady. And I'm like, never ever did I imagine mm. I would work with Beyonce. Mm. Mama Lifika is the one who introduced me to Beyonce. To, and then I became a fan. And then, we, oh. mm. so first Mama Lifika introduced me to Beyonce. Mm. Years later. As in to I, her music. Yeah, to her music. Okay. I knew her music, mm. but I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Chick flick kind of sure. genre. Then I started enjoying her music, mm. watched it on projector, concerts and stuff. And then, mm. working with her. Sure. Hey. Did you guys get to meet meet when you were working on Black is King? Do you know that thing called non-disclosure agreement? Mm. In short, it's called NDA. Mm. We signed it. Nda. Barmi. Nda. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, when last did you tell Tao how much he means to you? On Sunday when he came to the show. Yeah. Because um, he's your ride or die. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 everybody knows that was mm. my ride or Yo, Gamarata Kapelo Ageo, Chama Dude, Umbiza Malome. Sometimes I call him Twitter mm. because he's so informative. He's, sure. he's, he's got a whole lot of knowledge mm. uh, about our culture sure. as black people, mm. our culture as the Bedi people, our mm. culture as the people of Sikukuni, mm. El Maoshi Arona, sure. the, the kings. And uh, there, um, I met Dau at drama school. Uh, and we are both Sundance fans, mm. so you can imagine uh, Sundance and, and, games at and, Fagal Fair. And it uh, doesn't help that Kaiser Chiefs has launched uh, chips, so you guys are going to be eating even some more. You, you, <laughs> this is how much I love Tao. I quote Tao in some of my captions. Hey, uh, there's one I quoted him in one of my posts. I said, yeah. um, Amakosi are the. Eh? Kaiser very, Chiefs. Uh, be very careful now. No, no, it's that's fine. My, that's my team. No, 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 no. no. We run this country when that, it comes to soccer. Ah, that's, we that, that's Even my the team. studio, oh, you, they can't see that side. Uh, <laughs> this is gold. This is not yield. Yeah, that's why you gotta be worried. You know what gold <laughs> does, eh? <laughs> same, based on the same feathers. So Dao says, Kaiser Chiefs, mm. Amakosi Weppola. Mm. Like they are the ancestors of soccer. Mm. That's how much I love my friend. Because mm. I lost my lifelong friend we met when we were five years old mm. uh, through school. Sure. Uh, mm. Much like that, we met at drama school. So Koki, we met we met when we were five. Mm. We shared a desk. He changed schools. I forced my parents to follow him to whatever school he went. Oh, wow. And even 95, when I went to this Afrikaner school, mm. is because I was trying to go to Gogi School, Capital Bar Primary. Mm. But when I went to apply with my father, we said, it's on Flower Street. Mm. Kind of that two streets on Flower. The one is English, the one is African. You ended up in the African school. Come December, Joe, take a uniform out. He says, no, bro, this one, I am a woo, fuck. 
So Koki was learning English, you were learning Afrikaans, <laughs> same street. <laughs> so I'm going to travel like a transport one. The mission now is not coming together. Fast forward, so uh, Koki then, um, we've been friends ever since. Yeah, like, yeah. We did everything together. Sure. And in 2009, even at drama school, mm. both Dao and my uh, my teachers at drama school mm. and classmates, they knew Dao. I mean, Gogi. Gogi, yes, yes. Yeah, he just came in for lunch because mm. uh, he was doing metallurgy engineering at Vets Durham uh, mm. Or Vets Tech. Vets Tech, mm. yeah. Fast forward to 2009, I'm at rehearsal mm. on the 24th of September, Heritage Day. I get a call. Shola, Shola, good about it. Do you know anything? I'm like, hey, man, now, Skype from Papela. I'm waking because I'm expecting him to come with my younger brother. Ah, yes. Ke holiday, Rodo Braya. We we made plans. Mm. Hey, and then I was like, Denzel, there's something in Ashaya minds. I need to call, and then I called the girlfriend, mm. and she confirmed. Jeez, and today every year the fifth of so. He was born on the 5th of October. Today is the 5th. Mm. And he passed on on the 24th of September. These two days, including the date when my mom passed away and the date uh, that is my mom's birthday, mm -hmm. are one of my most celebrated days. I celebrate them from the bottom of my heart. Mm. Yet they are very emotional. Sure. Sure, with Kogi, I've moved on. Uh, I've dealt with the grief. And I am dealing with the grief around my mom's passing. It's mm -hmm. not going to be anytime soon, anytime fast. Mm -hmm. So, Tao is what Koki was to me. Sure. We met on day one mm -hmm. at school, clicked, and we've been friends ever since. And you strike me as a very loyal friend. And I'm a very loyal person. And, and, and the fact that you'd be doing gigs for mines in Rustenburg, and the one meal they'd buy for you, you'd save, take it back to the house where there was an onion and weed that you guys can eat together. Very few people will do that. Very few people. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm a very loyal guy. Um, I have to tell you, and then down the line, when Dao started getting something, mm -hmm. he felt that he wanted to leave because we had another friend move mm -hmm. in. And when the, the third friend moved in and I was having sex and they were not having sex, then when he left for Cape Town, then Dao also left. And I was like, where are you going? It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. Plus, when you go inconsiderate, you're having sex. Eh? I you, can what, hear everything. What are you eh? supposed to do? And I can hear everything. <laughs> eh? Yeah, is it, is it because when I let you go 500 denyan? And I'm like, Ebile. Hold, hold on. <laughs> Get Ebile. You are going to come back from Tembisa, from that, your sister's house. You are going to come back here. We are going to fight about it. Yeah. And we fought about it mm. in that same cottage. And he moved back in. Eh? So was it a cottage? So Mudimu, it's a house, but then what is it in Kutza Petram? Oh no, you guys think in the cottage? Yeah. Were you sharing on. a cottage? Yeah. So there's three of you? So, so... And then when you decided to have sex in the cottage? My man, my bedroom is the only one with the door. The other bedroom doesn't have a door. So they can hear everything, little of cloth for everything? Yeah. It was not nice, I know, guys, but... <laughs> you know, it was a small space. And... Yeah, it, 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 it was that. But. I will take you 500. <laughs> but it was because I could have no regular chicken liver. So I got a regular chicken liver and a nagger regular chicken liver. Yeah. So it's just because of where. Yeah. So I can't say, don't drop drop here. Exactly. Hane horror from Africa. That's why I go once I get a. Hwanyi, Wamolefatsi. But it's only in Africa, though, that even at your. <laughs> Poorest. <laughs> when you're making 500 bucks a week, someone will say to you, "Your funds are 500." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, because honestly, and honestly, it be our vein. Because yeah. before, ne we ira got timing. Sure. But now, because our sarubala mo fa so regular pump up metrics. Oh yes, 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 yes. Wa pump up yano. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> but how do you navigate that in a friendship where we are coming up together but your shit is starting to pop before your friend's stuff? Um, are you one of those people that will downplay your success? Because I've had situations where coming up with friends of mine where we're, we're DJs, I wouldn't tell them some of my milestones because I almost felt like they might feel like I'm throwing it in their face. Yes, I expect them to be happy for me. Yeah. But also at the same time, I want to downplay it because I don't want them to feel some kind of way. So I don't know how you guys navigated that in your friendship. It's crazy because Dao was the one to do mm. film and television before myself. Mm. He was on Blood Diamond with Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I'm trying to join his agent, yes. his management team, sure. and Bang Tswala mm. they're not hearing me. Mm. Tao did a whole lot of movies, internationals. Mm. At that time, so it's all life. Sure, sure. So, so I so. think Nali and I, we balanced it mm. and still continue to balance it yes, yes, really yes, well yes. because Rarata. Yeah. And you know, you yeah. have your own rooms and your own mattresses and your own homes. Yeah. So you, everyone can do what they want. So even then, when he was shooting Blood Diamond with yeah. all of these famous people, mm. there was never a point where I was like, ah, man, if I was at that agency, I would be with mm. in the same film. No, it was more like, ish. If sure. I was at the same agency, mm. you and I would be in the same film. Absolutely. And we, ha we were then in another film together, mm. uh, Machine Garden Preacher, which is also an international. Mm. And we were in the same shot. So we sure. celebrated each other for mm. being in the same shot. Yes, sir. And we had to learn Arabic. Mm. And so when we were learning dialogue, because we're in the same scene, we're learning Arabic together. Mm. So I want to love a color. It was a beautiful it was, it was perfect. It was perfect. So sometimes he's Hollywood, and I'm just not even Lokshan, but I haven't even done Lokshan Bicycle with David. Go and mm -hmm. then I'm just doing children's theater shows. Mm -hmm. There, good morning, kids. Get funny, Uncle. What go on Crawford? Or so you're just like I am one year. One bench, I guy like Talo Hollywood and Nakin Amidzi Tafo Lago Crawford. When all my loom and Motagalan is the same, I'm playing a dog. I'm playing a dog. I'm being told. Kerish, Tau goes almost Zambig, you know. Hey, I have a very good job. So, what are you going to do? I was so much for me. Yeah. What did the dog do on the table? What did the dog do? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and now here you are. You, yeah. you're, you're the big dog now, so. Mudi Mudi. Mudi Mudi. Yeah. My dude, we need to let you go. Um, I think we've gone way over time. Um, when I start being looked at uh, funny by these people here, I see them. As long as you go, how do I want to get you all in trouble? Hey, perifera. The perif, the perifera. My dude, what are you working on next? Um, what am I working on next? Yeah. Oh snap! Mm. We're gonna be going back into the kitchen. Mm. I joined Fatal Seduction at the end of yes. what is season one. Mm. So we're going to be cooking. So there'll be another fatal seduction. Yeah. He banna. And the minister will now be seen to be. Yeah, because in the first season, all you hear is his voice. Yeah. And the last thing you see is his bum. But people are shaking. So, so, so it is your bum. Yes, sir. Mm. Very beautiful bum. I got very beautiful reviews. So, so you're fine. People you're, liked my bum. Yeah. Like, oh, Warren, we saw your bum. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, my word. It's so, it's so I, tart. I wish I could grab it. <laughs> and I like such compliments. And you're fine with nudity and sex scenes and everything else. I am fine with that as long as nobody has to see my dick because mm. it is mine and mine alone. Um, I don't know how to ask this question without being funny. Fine. But alopecia, ingele mashish. Yeah. So even the shishis are gone. No, my man. Like there's no hair anywhere. Zero. Like, no hair here. Pubic area. Even this pubic area. Even inside the ear, the nose, the eyelashes, eyebrows. But eating nothing. My man. Eh? <laughs> my man. Don't start with me. Yo, there was a time where I was the one, bro. Like yeah. the girls were like, oh, Warren, I enjoy you so much because like you don't have hair. Like, I, like, I love, oh my word. I, like, I love giving you head because I don't have to floss after that. My <laughs> man. My man. <laughs> Hey, it's a pleasure to have Palupishi here. You know, 
ni pizi ni astega to say yarna miriri but some pleasures I don't understand we enjoy them I don't understand they are pleasurable when I be easy un sa montu un sa mashishi hey man I put the chance to get friendly to be like here come come up let's let's dance let's dance are great don't don't hog the mic come up no I, i've had my fair share no alupisha is real and i see hmm. so like i i hear people you know they're like oh i love warren masemola and the fact that his illness doesn't hmm. deter him and i'm like it's not an illness it's a condition it's a condition hmm. illness i mean how is it comprehension comprehension hmm. i was yes. talking about it yes. ill is sick and then ness is the state and the nature of mm. being ill sure. so when you say i'm i'm, I'm i have a illness i I never go weak my mm. body starts because How sick. of this because mm. of my condition yeah alopecia sure. alopecia is just a condition of not having any hair cells mm. and hair cells don't grow back sure. once you lose them mm. so if anybody's going through that mm. and already they I have like this this type of skin and then here they have hair like many women do because mm-hmm. a whole lot of women ask for it mm-hmm. they stretch their hair from kids when they are four years old mm-hmm. and they they relax their hair mm-hmm. what you were doing is pulling the hairline back mm-hmm. and also what you're doing you are contributing to a, a quick it's not menopause what do you call it fry uh, fry uh, fry boys fry boys fry boys fibroids yeah those things mm-hmm. because of chemical aids and any so especially mobile siding for real it damage a little pair of the womb for it damage it is a that thing very fibroids very early in their life because of chemical mm. and a chemical a very good one for relax mm. it's been sold in this country but banned <laughs> in, in, in all african countries mm. and south africa is the only country that uses that uh, mm. product and it's on billboards and everything mm. and it damages hair so even even like as a woman if you have half your hair here mm. and they tell you this ointment does the work it doesn't do the work mm. the hair cells are gone you damaged them and what's worse is that you are now further putting alcohol because mm. i agree you just drink the water you say it's bottled water you don't know it was bottled here in perfeni mm. at a big room you must read mm. and you will see that anything that has petrol or paraffin in it mm. it's not to go on the skin sure i don't understand why people shave a chest cap and then they say spirit no but you also need to understand that we are living in an era that where alcohol is damaging your skin but you need to understand we're living in an era where uh, people have reached a point and often because of desperation that were willing to self medicate or self fix i mean how many guys are buying products from the feeling station you from most thing that are meant to make you last longer uh, um, have a longer erection you have no idea what is in that stuff but we're buying it because for a night it's a solution or yeah, no one no get to months my man you know what i mean so so i think we've reached a point where we're willing to risk health life and limb for a quick fix without reading exactly what it is we're taking my man if you shave your eyebrows hmm. and you shave them for over 10 years do you mm. think they will grow back at some point the evolution will kick in eventually do you understand to mm. hang alcohol on your skin take methylated spirit and put a chair a dot o takwa go baba it's it's not for the skin sure so anything that has alcohol is not for the skin in general mm. dermatologically sure. anywhere mm. anything in an alcohol le, le methylated spirit sure. is not ours we're out of time my man i love you too like i said uh, let na, me make it na, to my na, apple na, 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 we can talk and talk yeah. and talk but thank you so much for hanging out my man thanks for being an inspiration thanks for giving us another reason to love you with just some of the stories and the anecdotes you've been sharing with us and uh, thanks for also uh, reminding us that you know make lasting friendships and hang on to the, the the friends that are there for you that are good to you we hang on to people like that we 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 the, the thing is we're so used to the drive through that we're going through friends all the time now you're making new friends you're making new friends you're hanging out with this person cuz onale nyoko you're making friends le mutho cuz o tshori meya and when all that tender but like i said you're a perfect example leta that um, remember who was there from day one and keep those people close to you Amen. Yeah, but um like I said, ultimately you inspire a lot of us. So please just keep on just shouting from every tower to remind us what a little one we are great. From Africa and we are great. 
Amen. Can and I just share one more message as a person who has alopecia? Mm. Please leave your hair as it is. Mm. It doesn't matter what ethnicity or race group you are of. Mm. Do not mess around with your hair. It's yours. Mm. But particularly speaking to Africans, your hair is your crown. Mm. Stop damaging and styling and putting chemicals in your hair. Natural as it is, mm. it is yours. Mm. Enjoy your hair and keep it like that. It's your crown. Mm. Wear mm. your crown with pride. Mm. Mm. Before you take pride in your hair, when you see other race groups mm. buying black people's hair, mm. like Peruvian weave as a business now, mm. respect your hair. It's mm. your crown. Absolutely. Google Solomon, he had seven ropes, and Google why he had seven ropes on his hair. Mm. That's your power, that's your antenna. Sure. Yeah, stay blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, Warren Masemula is about to leave the building. Due to popular culture, when we enter October, many of think of it as Halloween month. However, there's something more scary and more real than ghouls and ghosts, and that is breast cancer. So while we at Wow What A Week love to promote good vibes, we also figured we'd help to promote good health. And to those rolling their eyes, we're not just talking to the women out there. Guys, you also need to get yourself checked as well. Uh, it's actually nicer when your partner helps you feel. Um, even guys help your partner feel. So wishing you all health, awareness, and a Wow Week ahead. We are coming to you from AMP Studios. Uh, we're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to Pezulu Works for the cinematography, our audio imaging, uh, courtesy of Otis the Flow Fraser, and our guests, Eugene Koza and Warren Masemola. Shout out to our uh, Kuvesh Mohan, the creative producer, and our show producer, sha, sha. Uh, that's me trying to be Sean Connery. Uh, show producer, Kilecho Mudisha King. And uh, email us at uh, waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves.